Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Amlung. I am from the Regan Street Institute. Uh, we're based in the US and we do a lot of global health informatics work. Uh, we've got some people on our team who were central to the formation of OpenMRS. And now a good amount of our team works on the Open Concept Lab, which is a terminology service that can help you to manage concepts that end up going into your OpenMRS instance. Now, uh, something that I want to go through today, I, as I go through these activities, I invite you all to follow along as we are doing it. If you haven't already done this before, please go to app.openconceptlab.org to make yourself a user profile if you don't have one. This will take a few minutes, so uh, uh, you'll get a verification email to say, great, this is your email. Uh, so keep an eye on your email as I'm going through the slides. I just wanna show real quick, here is what it'll look like if you're signing in for the very first time. Uh, you'll see our search page, and uh, even if you're not signed in, you can still do searching and stuff. But to be able to make content, you're going to have to sign in and make an account. So I just want to show there's this sign in button at the top right. You'll be taken to a login screen where if you already have an account, please put it in here and you can sign in. And if not, you'll register and go through that email verification process. So I uh, just wanted to give you the opportunity to do this if you want to follow along with the activity. So uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go through some slides real quick just to show you all what Open Concept Lab is and what we do. First off, I want to just give a very brief intro to what is terminology and why does it matter? Uh, and it helps to kind of talk about this in relation to a terminology service also. So a terminology is the language that people and systems are using to communicate health data. And uh, concepts are kind of the atoms within the broader terminology. So uh, I got a couple of examples here where there's local terminologies. And so this could be a national health data dictionary for a country, or it could be a unique code set in use by a hospital system. There are also standard terminologies. So if you have ever used FHIR, there are HL7 gender codes that are these four codes. There are also commonly LOINC codes, which are used for labs. So these are the individual terminologies that serve as the language for systems and people to communicate health data to each other. A terminology service, on the other hand, and thank you, Joshua, for posting the link in the chat. Uh, a terminology service uh, is what uh, Open Concept Lab is. It's a service that helps to ensure that your incoming data gets normalized to these standards, these terminologies. And there's a couple of major pieces of value behind this. One is that it is a single source of truth for your concepts where they can be centrally managed. And that, become, that comes really in handy if, for example, you have two or three OpenMRS instances and you don't want to do concept management in each individual one. Instead, you have OCL as the single source of truth. Uh, additionally, you, uh, by using a terminology service, it makes it easier to share this metadata and vocabularies and other clinical data elements and standards. Uh, if you ever work with the CL terminology, you're, you're getting this benefit by accepting changes that come from the CL vocabulary when they do updates. So you're sharing content and you're working with the global community to make this work. Uh, if you've ever seen the OpenHIE architecture, terminology services plays a role in here in the registry services component. Uh, it is uh, one of these registries that's providing the standards and definitions for systems, and those can include terminologies, dictionaries, code systems, value sets, you name it. Uh, this, along with other HIE components, are meant to help you normalize clinical data and then eventually achieve that semantic interoperability. And I did want to just give some examples of terminologies here, and apologies for the pretty, you know, dark and text-heavy slide here, but uh, each terminology has its own scope and its own intent, and some are broader than others, but I wanted to give some examples, noting that some terminologies are open licensed, they're globally accessible, they have fewer barriers to use. Others have a little more barriers to use. Maybe they're just made for one country, or maybe you have to have a license to use them. So you want to make sure you're at least a little cautious and informed when looking at, the, at these. For drugs, there is a WHO ATC terminology. Uh, and then there's also an RX norm terminology that tends to be more US specific, but some people still try to use it because it can be a pretty good terminology. Uh, as far as having multiple domains underneath, 
SNOMED GPS is a globally available set of SNOMED CT. And then uh, if you have the SNOMED CT license, then you uh, can be using the full set of terminology for multiple domains. Uh, for diagnoses, ICD-10 and ICD-11 are good examples. And then sometimes there's country-specific subsets like ICD-10-CM is the US subset. Uh, terminal interface terminologies, you might have worked with the CL interface terminology before, makes it interface friendly and uh, much more convenient to put directly into OpenMRS. Uh, there's also procedures like ICHI and current procedure terminology, and for labs, there is LOINC, which is already open license, and uh, there really isn't a uh, harder to use uh, set of it because LOINC kind of is the lab standard. I'm going to introduce very briefly the Open Concept Lab itself. So uh, as I said before, Open Concept Lab is that open source terminology management system. It's uh, available to collaboratively manage and publish and use your definitions in the cloud with a global community. So OCL has an API that provides real-time access to terminology resources and makes it more straightforward to integrate into your health information system. So OpenMRS is an example that we will show later that OpenMRS actually queries OCL's API to get concepts to bring into the system. So uh, just a couple things is that OCL is open source here. Uh, it is cloud-based. So OCL online is generally what people will be using because uh, what benefit comes from being cloud-based is that we get to see each other's content if you want to, of course. We get to see each other's content and learn from each other and get updates from when CL gets updated or when ICD gets updated or what have you. Uh, we're community driven, we're standards based, especially if you are uh, wanting to get engaged with FHIR. And we're also very focused on low and middle income countries. And that's why PEPFAR, World Health Organization and OpenMRS partner with us on this work. So uh, I don't think we need to go too briefly into this, but I just wanted to show that there are a couple of products that OCL uses all together. The REST API that I, may, I mentioned before, which is also Fire enabled, is the terminology service. This is that technical backend that uh, everybody is going to be using in some way or another. The OCL term browser is what we'll actually go through today, which is that it's the user interface. It's this tool where you can search and visualize and start to collect content in OCL without having to know fancy REST calls or anything like that. And then both of these tools, uh, they can be deployed on a local environment, and some countries have elected to do that when they have the right use case for it. But in general, people are often getting started with OCL online, which is that a link that Josh actually put into the chat before. That is OCL online. Everybody is uh, Almost everybody is putting their content in there, and we've already taken care of some of the harder steps like loading it with a bunch of terminologies and things like that. So OCL Online is what we're going to be focusing on today. We'll be working in there and uh, playing with the term browser. So just a few things that you do with Open Concept Lab, because the, this toolkit is made to help your organization manage health data standards, whether they are standard terminologies or your own local systems. And eventually, you'll be able to more effectively exchange health information with it. So just some things that we will actually go through today as a group. I just wanted to show that uh, we uh, first thing that people often do is they'll get in there, they'll start searching, they'll browse the content, they'll start looking for what is relevant to you. And then when you want to ask some questions, you can compare side by side, see what is different between these two concepts, why should I use one versus the other? Uh, does it mean that I can use any organization's concepts in any other organization? As long as both organizations, uh, as long as the organization is making their content public, which not everybody has to, but often people do. If you make your content public, then that means somebody can look at it and say, you know what, I like what they're doing. I'm going to use that content in my own set. Or sometimes others will also say, I like what they're doing. I just need to tweak it a little bit. So I am going to make a copy of their content and then start uh, tweaking it myself. So uh, as long as the content is, as long as the organization uh, made it public, then you can use it. And then I see another question, what happens if they alter it? That's getting a little bit more into the advanced piece of it. Uh, so I, I will probably answer it a little bit in our demonstrations. It, the 
it, if someone alters the content that you've been using, then you don't automatically get everything that they have changed. Uh, you, it certainly depends on how you set up your content. Uh, if you are choosing to get every uh, update that they are making, then you can do that. Some people will say, I just want to get their content in this point in time, which is also another valid piece you can do. You can say, I just want this version of their content, and we are going to uh, go ahead with that. So I will uh, talk a little bit about these as we go through the demonstrations. So uh, additionally, some example features is that you have your own local content, your own mappings and things like that. You want to go ahead and publish those OCL supports that. And then if you have your local content, you can map those to reference vocabularies like ICD-10 and LOINC and CL and all of those. Uh, there's uh, also the ability to use those mappings to transform data so that you can keep it in your local representation, but then also express it in a standard representation. Uh, OCL also allows you to build value sets so that you can, uh, for example, make, let's say, a, a here's a subset of labs that uh, my people are commonly using, or here is an answer set that people are commonly using. And HL7's gender codes were a good example of a value set that has four uh, values in it that you might use as a, an answer, as a pick list to a drop down. And then this one, this last one is a little bit broader, but collaborating with a community. You get to reuse content and when you're implementing. And I want to uh, emphasize that one a little bit because uh, making your own content can be powerful. It can be great, but it also can be very labor intensive. Uh, I keep bringing up the CL interface terminology, which again, is it, it's separate from OCL. OCL is the system. CL is a terminology, an interface terminology that lives in OCL. Uh, reusing that interface terminology can save you so much time, so much effort. And that's what OCL Online does well, is that you're able to reuse their content and not have to do so much manual work. But when you do have to do manual work, OCL lets you do that too. So we'll be talking through all of those. This group activity that we're going to be doing here is uh, essentially a follow along and you can try out what I'm doing. Uh, I also invite if you just want to watch, that is perfectly okay too. You uh, take it at whatever speed you want. Some people prefer to do it hands on. Some people prefer to do it uh, just watching what I do. So I invite you to follow along with me and try to do these in your own user profile. So I showed at the top right, you could sign in into your profile and you are, uh, once you do that, you're taken to your own personal landing page. And from here, you're able to see some details about yourself. You're able to uh, see these apps. Uh, if you have accessed recent content, there actually is a little history button up here. And if you ever pin content like I have up here, uh, that's with these little pin icons, then you can also see your kind of bookmarks almost. So, uh, what we are going to do first is uh, oftentimes, uh, it, let's just say you want to go ahead and start making your own dictionary. This dictionary is going to consist of content from other organizations, and it also contain a little bit of content from your own organization. So to get content from other organizations, we'll start with collections. So come here into your user collections, and we are going to go ahead and make a collection with this plus collection button here. So uh, one thing that I do want to emphasize as we're doing this is that when you create content, you can make it as your, under your own user profile. You can also make it under any organizations that you belong to. We won't go too deep into that, but if you are making official content on behalf of your own organization, I would actually recommend making your organization first. Once you've made that, then you can tell what collection you want to go into. But for this demonstration, it's perfectly fine to just put the content into your own user profile. So for your collection, you'll be giving it a short code. So I'm going to call this OpenMRS demo. Oh, good. I haven't used that before. And then uh, give it a little short name that you like. Uh, if you want to give it a full name that you like, uh, good to do that too, something more descriptive. Uh, essentially, you just want to set your content up well. And a lot of these you can go back and change later. Short code is the only one that is set in stone once you do it. So you want to make sure you like that short code first off. You can add a description. 
I would always recommend you want to add a language and any actually any languages you plan to be using are good too. Uh, if you're just using one language, then put that. If you want to add more languages, you can add supported languages too. Uh, collection type, you can use whatever you want. For this example, we'll do a dictionary. For the OpenMRS group, I always recommend using the OpenMRS validation schema. This will check that your con concepts are formatted correctly and won't break OpenMRS when you import it. Uh, for the, there aren't any other settings that we need to do for this one, but I just want to show that uh, if you have some fire settings that you want to set up, you can do that. If you want to make some custom attributes, you're also able to do that. And if, even if you want to give an about page, you can actually even write a nice big paragraph about it if you want to. So once you filled out your collection, go ahead and create, hit that button to create collection. And here we have it. We have our OpenMRS demo collection. So once you've done that, then the next thing you want to do is we're going to uh, yes, and question in the chat, does it mean that it validates short name has already been used? Uh, for short code, yes. That very top short code, it is going to be unique within your own source. So uh, that means that it, you cannot have two OpenMRS demo sor sources or collections, but uh, you and another organization could share an ID. But yes, OCL does validate that you don't have any duplicate uh, collection IDs or source IDs. So now that we've made a collection, the other thing that I want to do is we're going to make a source and the source will save for later, but this is for content that we own. So we will not be using this right quite yet. We hope that we don't have to use this, but eventually you do need to probably have a source. So I'm going to call this OpenMRS demo source. I'm just going to give it a couple of uh, names here. And just like before, going to give it a default language that we'll be using. It's still going to be a dictionary here in my case. Of course, we want it to be an OpenMRS validation schema. Only other thing, this is here in the advanced settings. This is especially important for OpenMRS people. ID auto assignment is very, very, very handy so that you don't have to make an ID every time you use this. Uh, there's a little bit of a banner up here about what OpenMRS recommends. For our IDs, we want to set those to sequential so that they will always auto assign an ID. It'll go one, two, three, four, five. And then for our external IDs, we always want these to be UIDs. Not everybody wants to do it this way, but OpenMRS users usually want this to be UID. And I do see a note in the chat that it looks like OCL implements code systems and value sets. Yes, and I will talk about that later, actually. Very good observation. So, okay, once you've set up your system, you make sure that you get your ID auto assignments fixed, then we're going to also create a source. So, again, we won't be using this quite yet, but when we get to the point that we need to make our own content, that's where it's going to live in a source. So now that we have a collection which can hold all of our content, we're now going to go searching for content and we're going to make our dictionary with whatever we want to do. So uh, there are a few things that we could be searching for. I'm going to be using the global search in this case. Uh, I am going to start with a lab. Let's go ahead and look for a blood panel. And you're able to see in here uh, that it brings up content that is uh, LOINC specific and is CL specific and is PIH specific. If you are wanting to go down to a single terminology, there are filters on the side where you can say uh, who owns it or what source or what have you. If you're only looking for a specific thing like a test, for example, then there are also concept classes that you can filter down by. Same with locales if it's uh, specific to a language. So uh, anyway, there's all kinds of things you can do with these filters. In this case, let's say I'm only going to be using CL content, and that's often what people will be doing unless they have a use case that says, all right, I need to use LOIN. In this case, we're just going to use CL. So I'm going to click on this concept. It opens it up here on the side, and it's always good to verify that this is the kind of content that you want. Uh, it's good to look in the associations, check that, okay, it looks like there's a few labs in this routine blood panel. We've got a hematocrit, we've got white blood cells, this seems like a good concept for me. So once I have 
uh, decided that this is good for me, I like it, then I'm going to hit add to collection here. When you do that, it's going to come up with any collection that you have access to. I'm on a lot of organization teams, so it's uh, actually very big here. Uh, you can certainly search, and I will search for Open MRS. We're doing an Open MRS demo here. So uh, I've clicked my collection, what I'm going to add to. Now, uh, OCL has this really, really handy feature that uh, lets you get not only that concept, but also its mappings, its set members, if you will, underneath it. Um, in this case, most people will want to use the OpenMRS compatible cascade here. This usually is what people are going to use. There are other cases where you say, no, only give me the concept and its mappings. Uh, sometimes you only want to go one level down. In general, the OpenMRS compatible cascade is what people like to use, though. So we're going to select that option. We're going to hit Add. It'll take a little bit because OCL is uh, tallying up what concepts to bring into your collection. And once you give it a little bit, then it'll show you that all these references got added. Uh, references are just a fancy way of saying, great, we found a bunch of concepts and a bunch of mappings that you said you wanted. We brought those all in. Uh, you hope that they're all green. Sometimes there will be a red box that comes up that says, hey, you already have this concept in here. You can't add it again. Also, it might say, oh, this is conflicting with the OpenMRS validation schema, which is its own set of issues. We won't get too deep into that, though. So now that I see that these are all green, everything looks good. I'm actually going to just check real quick. Let me open up my uh, profile page. and I just want to real quick check on that collection, just see what it looks like. So you can see in here, I have brought in the CL concepts that I was expecting. So essentially, I've got routine blood panel here. Then I've also got the individual lab test concepts that came in with it. So you can just see here that I brought in five concepts. And if I click on any one of them, I can see some details about it and be like, OK, great. I Here is my lab set that I was trying to bring in. So let's try it with a different concept. Let's try it with a specific diagnosis concept. I think we could probably go with, I think malaria is always a, a good one that we can use in examples. Uh, again, if you search for the malaria concept, you can see what other organizations are using. For example, you might see uh, Nigeria MRS here as an example. You see a SNOMED GPS concept in here. You see partners in health. And of course, you might see the standard CL concepts, which in this case, we're only going to build using CL concepts here. So uh, I go through, I look at it. I might actually even look at the mappings, be like, ooh, OK, it looks like uh, this is the same as ICD-10's unspecified malaria. Looks like PIH also has a similar content. And you can even see what questions this is an answer to and what sets this is a part of. And if you see this little negative one here, that tells you just that it is a part of this set and it is a part, it is an answer to this question. So malaria looks like it is an answer to medical cause of death from algorithm. algorithm. It's also a primary reason for referral. It's also a general and unspecified diagnosis. Basically, this is telling me this is a good concept. This is a good malaria concept. It's got lots of mappings to standard terminologies that I like. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and add that to my collection. So I'm going to do our OpenMRS demo again. We're going to do our OpenMRS compatible cascade. Then we're going to hit Add. And we can see, once again, 11 references successfully added. Uh, I do see a uh, question in the chat. What? It, where does the OpenMRS validation schema come into play? Let me see if I can actually find a uh, example that might break the schema. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, OK, so far, uh, it looks like a good amount of these concepts are not going to break it. Uh, an example that might have broken it, just to say, is that you can only have uh, one fully specified name malaria concept. So let's say Loink, for example, put two English synonyms that both were malaria. Well, for OpenMRS, that's not valid. So you are, uh, if you try to import that concept into your collection, OCL will say, mm -mm, that doesn't work like that. So I, I can actually show an example uh, now. I think it would be good. Let's go ahead and make an example where we are saying, 
uh, that let's say smoking status. We're going to, in this example, look at the CL smoking status and we're going to decide, you know what? This isn't exactly the kind of question that I want. It's kind of close, but I need to tweak it. There's things that I need to do to make it work better for me. So when the concept is not how you want it to be, there it's close, but it's not quite, what you can do is use this clone to source. And so what clone to source will do is copy the concept and it'll co copy its mappings. And from then on, that concept is owned by you. It means that you break the link to the CL concept originally. You'll be able to see that it came from CL, but it, you won't get updates or anything like that. So in this example, we're going to clone it and go to the OpenMRS demo source. Uh, it just gives you a little prompt that just says, here's what we're about to do. We're about to clone concepts in here. You can see, even see a little preview of what all will get in there if you want to. Uh, in this case, I already know this is what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit add. And so I, while it's working, I might preview it real quick. Okay, maybe not, might take a little bit. So, all right, it's going through, it is adding, and then, okay, great. So it has gone through and it has made copies of these concepts into my collection. You can see this little message up here, successfully cloned concepts. And you can see, if you want to go see what all, all was made. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna go back to my source and uh, let me actually use the history button because the history button is a good shortcut here. Uh, we're going to go back to our OpenMRS demo source, and you can see that we have our current every, or sorry, our smoking status concept in here with all of these answers, which is great, but keep in mind, these are no longer CL concepts. These are now owned by me. I now am going to manage them, which can be a blessing and a curse. The blessing is I can change this concept to be whatever I want it to be. In this case, I'm going to hit the edit button, which you can come up here in the actions. You can edit concept. And this is where you're able to make updates to it. Uh, make sure that you always give an update com com comment. I'm going to add a name in this case. And this is an example where I want to show where the OpenMRS validation schema might break actually. So names and synonyms, I'm going to add another. It's going to be way too similar to this first one. It's going to be English, it's going to be smoking status, and it's going to be fully specified. So again, this is an example that uh, I'm going to hit the update button and it's going to say, nope, can't do that. And you can kind of see, you cannot have more than one preferred name per locale. Oops, okay, I meant to say that it's going to be in, uh, let's not do French, let's do Spanish. Uh, but I do not know Spanish, but I'm just gonna say Fumador here. And uh, then we're gonna say fully specified and preferred. All right, now I have the right set of names here. I hit update and now you'll be able to see, let me go ahead and refresh that concept. Now my extra name is added. So I was able to tweak this concept to do what I wanted to do. Maybe one other thing that I need to do is I need to make a mapping to another concept. Say there is not enough answers in here. Uh, there's one answer that I'm like, well, okay, my I need a new concept for smokes 50 cigarettes per day. We'll just say that. This is going to be, so I'm going to go up here. I'm going to create a concept. This will be a finding. It will be, that's not the right data type, but I'll use coded for this example. Uh, I'm going to say this new answer is smokes 50 cigs per day, and that's what we need it to be. It's English, it's fully specified, and it's preferred. So we're creating that custom concept. Looks great. There's our new concept right there. And now what I need to do is add this mapping as an answer to this concept. So my question is smoking status and what I don't see in here is smokes 50 cigs per day. I'm going to add new mapping and I'm going to make it a Q&A map type so that it fits in with the rest of these. I'm going to use in my own source, that's this OpenMRS demo, and we're going to search for 50, perfect, smokes 50 cigs per day, and then OCL autofills from there. Once I've done that, I'll hit save. And now you can see I have added an answer to this question. So now I've made my smoking status question do everything that I needed to do.
and that's great. Now, and we want to, before we wrap up here, we want to make sure this gets in with our collection, with everything else. So we are going to add this to our collection now that we're all done with it. It will go to our open MRS demo collection. And of course, I want to do the cascade here for open MRS. I'll hit the add button. It'll go through this little process, the spinny wheel. And then in just a moment, it'll add these concepts, the, this question and its answers to my collection. And yes, while this is loading up, thank you, Grace. Uh, we do have an open MRS squad call on Wednesdays to go through this. Uh, also, please feel free to reach out to me. I put my email address on the slides. Uh, definitely happy to connect, answer questions. And I'm also in the open MRS Slack. So love to talk to people there too. All right, so uh, that is working on it. I might hop over real quick to our open MRS demo collection just to kind of see what's going on in there. So, uh, oh, looks like it hasn't updated yet. So uh, we'll have to come back to that to make sure that the content got in there. Uh, I do want to show uh, an example of versioning, however. So I'm going back to my source. One thing that I didn't do that is a very good practice to get into uh, is uh, saving a version. So just to show how you can do that, because your head version is your workspace. It's everything that you're currently doing but it's not truly saved until you add a version in here. So in this case, I'm just making version number one and I'll go ahead and release it because maybe I've already tested it. I know it looks good. So it's always a good idea to save versions when your content is in a good state. Uh, one thing that we will do at this point, uh, Grace, I wanna throw it over to you in just a second to show how we import this into OpenMRS itself. Uh, if you go to your collection and you have, uh, we're going to have to use our, I, I'll actually just go ahead and add a version here. You always want to save a version before you start opening into OpenMRS. So OpenMRS import one, and we are going to release it. We're going to ahead and create it. Great. Perfect. All right, so um, what Joe's going to do is he's going to go to the nine dots at the top right of his screen here. That's the app switcher to system administration. So because he's an admin, he has access to this view. Um, now there's two things I'm gonna get you to do here, Joe. Um, can you uh, open in a new tab, the legacy admin? Perfect. So what you might be familiar with already, can you click on view concept dictionary on the top middle there? If you've been using OpenMRS before, you might already be familiar with this workflow. Let's type in one of your um, uh, concepts that you created in OCL, but we have not yet imported here. Let's just show that it doesn't exist. I think blood panel might have been wanting the, one of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So it doesn't exist. So let's go through the workflow of adding this by using what Joe has created in OCL. There are two ways we can do this. Um, first, uh, well, I'll, I'll show the um, more complicated way, but I'm going to get Joe to show the simplest one first, which we always recommend using for your testing flow anyway. So go back to that other tab that I had you leave open and um, go into the, actually, it's easiest if we use the legacy. Um, so, sorry, uh, back into legacy. And then under on the right, in the middle of the page, it says open concept lab configuration page. So um, the OpenMRS3 reference application has the o OCL module already added as part of the RefApp bundle. Um, but if you don't already have it, it's easy to add into your reference application distribution, um, the OCL module. So the OCL module is what enables this uh, user interface. And what we're now going to do is Joe's going to go back to his version page, and we're going to copy your subscription link. There we go. So here in OCL, there's this copy URL button. This has copied the URL with the API query. Do you want to just paste the URL in your browser so people can see what exactly the yeah. URL is carrying? So yeah, this whole link is going to OCL's API. It is pointing to me as the user. It's pointing to my OpenMRS demo collection. And it actually then points to a specific version, it points to that version of the demo. 
So Grace, can I go um, ahead and put this into the subscription? Yeah, so paste box? it in there. Okay, so because it's public, we don't need to put in your um, API token. We can use the demo token, that's fine. So click Save mm -hmm. Changes and Import. Okay, uh, uh -oh. so January 16th. So click on this one. This is why we always recommend using this view to test. Um, it looks like you are having issues with uh, one of the mappings missing. Um, oh, this is uh -oh. the this is the classic. I one think that it we might into. I and I think uh, this might be someone else is also working in this uh, in, in this okay. instance right now because I see uh, this goes to one of our users here. Let's go ahead and search to see if your concept made it in. Um, although yeah. I suspect it did not. Okay, no problem. Uh, we'll get we'll get it fixed and working for you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that's correct. So um, uh, sometimes errors happen, and these error messages help you to debug them. So when you're in the um, OCL web app online, uh, you can search for OpenMRS, and you'll see. Let me zoom in a bit here for you. You'll see that OpenMRS comes up as one as one of the organizations. So we actually, as a, as a community support team, we actually use Open Concept Lab to help us manage our demo metadata and our demo content. Um, so you can actually see in our collections that, uh, for example, the lab tests that you'll find in the O3 ref app and demo uh, are, are all being managed here. So when I need to add a new lab test, I would go ahead and do that in the same way that uh, Joe has shown you. And then I have two options. I can either do the subscription workflow where I copy the URL and do the workflow we saw Joe do. Or if I'm worried, um, we used to do this for everything, but then every time the server got reset or restarted, uh, you really don't wanna have to be resubscribing manually like you just saw. So I always recommend doing the manual subscription workflow um, to test for error messages. So actually Joe's example was great because uh, those are actually simple error messages to fix. But um, anyway, uh, then once you have sorted that out, you're going to download your, uh, not the CSV, I actually need to sign in. But when, you, when you've signed in to your OCL account, you can download, um, actually for public things, it would be great if the JSON was downloadable without signing in. Anyway, you're gonna download a JSON file and you'll see that in our, um, I've got some documentation that I shared in the chat about exactly how to do this, but you'll see, for example, in the reference applications configuration file, we have a folder called OCL. And this is where all the zipped JSON files are. So for example, we were just looking at basic lab tests. Here is the config that has all of the basic lab test metadata that we've imported from Open Concept Lab. It exists as a JSON file so that every time our, if, if our server crashes and gets restarted, I don't need to worry about the metadata. It's automatically loaded. I can still manage it independently on OCL with an internet connection, but if my site does not have an internet connection, it will still load the content, no problem. So if you still want to use the old version of, um, the OpenMRS admin for managing your concepts, that is okay. That still works just fine with, um, with OpenMRS. For example, let's say you're used to using uh, this user interface to manage your drugs or your concepts, still support it. Um, you can continue doing that. We just find that when we're onboarding people to OpenMRS 3, it's a good time to introduce them to Open Concept Lab, particularly if you are managing um, distributions, uh, like for example, we have some implementers that are managing hundreds or even thousands of distributions. And at that scale, managing your metadata becomes a lot more complicated and having a central place to manage it from um, makes life a lot easier. But if you're just managing a, a handful of OpenMRS instances, you might find it easier to use the legacy concept dictionary view. Um, for example, let's just find a quick, um, Example here, like managing it directly from this user interface. That is still fine and supported, no problem. Okay, that was a whirlwind tour of uh, metadata tooling.